welcome biologists to part two on how to culture microorganisms effectively. So we've already looked at how to do this in industry. We're now going to look at how you would do this in the lab. So there are different strategies and methods here that you can use. The first one we're going to talk about is a pore plate. Now what you would do here is you'd use a pore plate to estimate the number of colonies within your bacterial sample. And what you'd normally do is you provide, you do a sample, it's like so, um, of your bacteria. But what you'd normally do is serial dilution. Um, and we're going to talk about serial dilution a bit later on. Serial dilution basically allows you to dilute your original sample so that you can have a plate of which you can actually count the colonies. So on here, you can physically count those colonies that are formed. However, if this is too concentrated, um, I'm going to get too many bacterial colonies forming on this plate and as a result you won't be able to count them. So if I want to know how many colonies are in this bacterial sample I might need to dilute the, the sample first so that I can actually count the number of colonies and then times that up by how much you've diluted the sample. So we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Another type is the lawn plate. In this one, you have your suspension of bacterial cells. You pop that onto your plate and you'll spread it around using a spreader. And what this normally does is it allows you to identify on your plate after it's been incubated, it allows you to identify colonies that have been genetically engineered using a marker. So that could, could be antibiotic resistance or it could be a green fluorescent protein. And the last way in which you may be asked to do a plate is using a streak plate. Um, so the reason we would do this is to separate colonies of bacteria and to isolate them so that you can then pick up one of those colonies and do something with it in an experiment or to sample it or to have a look at what it is. So what you would do first of all is you would um, dip your inoculating loop into your sample. You'd scrape it across, gently across one side of your plate. You'd sterilize your loop again and then you gently touch one part of what you've already done and drag it across the plate again sterilize again and then pop your inoculating loop back into your sample dragging it across to number three sterilize and then again and then after incubation what you will find is that on part four here you will get some single colonies forming of which you can then do uh, further experiments with so culturing our microorganisms you need to make sure you're following certain um policies here and the things in the red boxes are taken directly from the mark scheme so i need to use aseptic conditions when i'm culturing microorganisms and this is because i do not want any contamination by unwanted microbes because they will compete with the microorganisms that i'm trying to grow for the nutrients on the agar gel they also might change the conditions and they may decrease the yield or affect anything that might be growing on the plate i need to make sure that the plates are incubated at 35 degrees um, if they're not, if they're incubated at a different temperature, or uh, um, it could lead to the growth of human pathogens, which is not what I want, especially if it's incubated um, around about 20-ish degrees. Um, it's important that when I'm um, doing, for example, a um, streak plate or a, a lawn plate, that you are flame in the neck of the tube which contains my bacterial sample. The reason why you flame the neck of the tube in which your sample, your bacterial sample is in before you put it onto the plate is because it causes the air to expand, it pushes the bacteria away so that it's less likely to settle in the tube. It also kill, kills any bacteria or microorganisms around the neck of the tube. A couple more. Uh, we need to make sure that the lid um, is held just above the dish when I'm adding in any solutions into my Petri dish. And this because it, in the air we do have uh, microorganisms in the air and I don't want any of them on my um, sample here. And uh, last one that we need to be aware of is when I am incubating my plates that they should be kept upside down. And this helps prevent the agar from drying out, which could reduce the bacterial growth and also make any results that you're looking for there invalid. So that's how to culture microorganisms in the lab rather than in industry. We're going to look at serial dilutions in part three, which is the next video. So guys, good luck with your exams. All the best. If you like the video, please like and subscribe.